What's going on everyone? Welcome to Good Vibe Games. I'm Neil and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Azul, Stained Glass of Sintra, published by Next Move Games and distributed in part by Asmodee Canada, who provided me with a copy of the game. So, let's dive right into it. To set up, place the factory displays in the center of the table based on the number of players. I'll be setting up for a two-player game, so I'll be using five. Place the glass tower beside the factory display within reach of all players. Each player chooses a color and takes the corresponding palace board, eight double-sided pattern strips, glazier, and scoring markers. You'll then choose either side A or B of your palace board to play with for this game. Just ensure that all players use the same side. I'll be using side A for this how to play, but just know that mechanically throughout the game, both sides play the same way. Where they differ is during the end game scoring, which I'll touch on in a little bit. Once you've chosen side A or B, you'll then shuffle all eight double-sided pattern strips and lay them out just above your palace board in the slots. That being said, each player has one strip with two gray joker spaces as seen here. Players who place that side up during this part of the setup should flip it over so that the jokers are on the other side. Take your glazier and place it above the leftmost pattern strip. Next, determine who will be in charge of keeping score. That player will take the scoring board and place it next to their palace board. Place a marker of each player's color onto the zero space of the scoring board and one at the top of the broken glass track seen here. Next, take one pane piece of each color, shuffle them around in your hands or use the bag provided, then place them at random one at a time onto spaces two to six of the round indicator seen here. Fill the bag with the remaining 95 pane pieces, draw one at random and place it on round one of the round indicator. The player who most recently cleaned a window receives the starting player tile and places it next to their palace board. Then, fills each factory display with four pane pieces randomly drawn from the bag. In Azul Stained Glass of Sintra, two to four players will be competing for pane pieces in order to fill pattern strips on their palace board. Once a pattern strip is full, all but one pane piece will be discarded, with the single piece being placed on the palace board in order to potentially be scored later. Filled pattern strips will then be flipped over in order to be filled again. Once it is filled a second time, you lose the pattern strip, potentially making it easier for you to fill others as the game progresses. The game plays over a series of six rounds and a final scoring phase. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Each round begins as follows. First, the player with the start player tile places it in the center of the table. Then that player takes the first turn. Play then proceeds clockwise with the players taking turns until all pain pieces from the factory displays and from the center of the table are gone. Then the round ends. On your turn, you must perform one of the following actions. You can either advance a pattern or move your glazier back to the leftmost pattern strip. If you choose to advance a pattern, you'll follow these three steps. Step one, pick pain pieces of one color. In this step, you'll either pick all pane pieces of one color from any one factory display, then move any remaining pieces from the chosen display to the center of the table, or pick all pane pieces of one color from the center of the table. Just a note, if you're the first player in this round to pick pane pieces from the center of the table, also take the starting player tile from the center. Place it next to your palace board and move your marker on the broken glass track of the scoring board down one space. Step two, place the pane pieces on one of your pattern strips. Place each of the pane pieces you picked up in step one onto an empty pattern space matching its color on one of your strips. But keep in mind the following. The pieces you picked up must be placed onto spaces of the same pattern strip. You cannot place one piece on one strip and then decide to place the next piece onto another. 
The pattern strip you choose can be either the one directly beneath your glazier or any of those to its right, but never to the left. If you choose to place the pieces onto a strip to the right of your glazier, first move your glazier to that strip, placing it directly above it. If you do not have enough empty matching spaces on the chosen strip, any excess pieces are considered to have fallen to the floor and broken. For each of these broken pieces, your marker on the broken glass track moves one space down. These broken pieces are then placed into the glass tower. If you have no matching spaces for any of the pieces you picked, all of them are considered broken. However, as long as you have a strip with at least one empty matching space that your glazier can reach, you must place the pieces on that strip, even if you'd prefer to drop them all on the floor. Additionally, each player has the one strip that shows two gray jokers. Each of these spaces can hold a pain piece of any color. In step three of advancing your pattern, you'll now check to see if the pattern is complete. And in order to show better examples moving forward, I've gone ahead and played some additional rounds. If after you're finished placing pain pieces on a pattern strip of your choice, one or more pattern spaces of the strip beneath your glazier are still empty, your turn is over and it's the next player's turn. However, if each of the five spaces are filled with pattern pieces, carry out the following three steps. First, check to see if any of the pain pieces on your completed strip match the color of the piece on the round indicator for the round you're currently playing. Gain one point for each matching piece, otherwise you gain no color bonus for the strip. Next, remove all five pain pieces from the completed strip, choose one of them to keep, and drop the other four into the glass tower. Which color you choose to keep for side A has no bearing on anything in the game aside from the fact that there will be one less piece of that color throughout the remainder of the game. However, on side B it can be important in regards to the final scoring. Then, place the pain piece you kept onto the palace window directly below that strip. If that palace window is still empty, place the pain piece onto the window's top frame and then flip the strip above the window to its other side, leaving your glazier above it. On future turns, if the top frame space already has a pain piece, put the new piece onto the bottom frame space of that window. Since that window is now complete, remove the strip above it from its slot and return it to the box, leaving your glazier above that empty slot. Finally, whether the palace window that you just finished holds one or two pane pieces, score that window now. Gain the points printed below that window and, in addition, all the points printed below those windows to its right that contain one or two pane pieces themselves. And that takes care of everything to do with advancing your pattern. The other action you can choose is to move your glazier back to its leftmost pattern strip. Instead of picking any pieces, you can move your glazier back to above your leftmost pattern strip. Just note that you cannot move it above an empty slot. If your glazier is already above your leftmost strip, you can't choose this action and must choose to advance a pattern instead. If at the end of any player's turn, there are no pain pieces left on any factory displays and in the center of the table, the round ends. Remove the top pain piece from the round indicator and drop it in the glass tower. When all spaces on the round indicator are empty, six rounds have been played and you must proceed with the end of the game. Otherwise, prepare for the next round with the player who holds the start player tile, refilling each of the factory displays with exactly four pain pieces as before. If the bag is ever emptied, refill it with pieces from the glass tower, then continue filling the displays. After the sixth round, the game ends and final scoring occurs. To determine the final score, each player carries out the following three steps. First, on the score track, gain one point for every three pain pieces left on your pattern strips. Then, lose points shown to the right of your marker on the broken glass track. And finally, gain bonus points depending on which side of the palace board was used. For side A, there are four ornaments on your board as seen here. For each ornament, count how many of the four frame spaces around it hold the pain piece. In the case of all four, gain an additional 10 points. 6 points for 3, 3 points for 2, and 0 points for 1 or none.
If instead you are using side B, count how many completed windows you have on your palace board. A window is considered complete if both of its frame spaces hold a pane piece. Then, choose one color and count how many pane pieces of that color you have placed on your windows on your palace board. Multiply this number by your number of completed windows and gain the results as points on the score track. In either case, the player with the most points wins the game. In the case of a tie, the tie player who lost fewer points via the broken glass track wins. If there is still a tie, the players share the victory. And there you have it. That was my how to play of Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on any future videos. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Links for everything in the description below. But until next time, thanks for watching and happy gaming.